So there's going to be this natural progression of all of these things when at the same time there is an umbrino. Cocaine nasal spray just being developed by Johnson, no, Johnson, Johnson. Can't remember the manufacturer. Johnson, Johnson made a Sketamin, which is the Ketamin nasal spray. And they've made that not for a, you in a therapeutic setting with a male and female person and then you get blindfolded and you get intrafusions. That's for literally you to carry on the go for anxiety. You'd go, I'm feeling anxious, shoot up some cat and go, oh, okay, cool. Like it's the lines are getting so blurred between what is medical and what do you know what I mean? And is is Dennis Walker brought? We're moving towards this like soma reality, where there'll be a drug to numb every feeling. You will be in perpetual bliss because oh I don't like this. I'm feeling anxious. I will take this one. Oh, I'm feeling depressed. I will take this. Take this. Take this. Like these feelings are here for a reason. You know, it's like the same. You stood on a nail and you got it in your foot, and you're like, ah, the pain. And you're like, oh, just numb the pain instead of going. Should I get the board out of my foot at first at least. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you make a good point about, like, the blurring lines between, you know, kind of what... what I mean, I, I always kind of sort of talk about, like, you know, with, with cannabis, like, you know, plenty of people are just smoking weed at the end of the day because they're stressed, right? Or they've had a busy day. And they, or, like, the same people can come over and neck a bottle of wine. You know, like, in theory, you could, based on the current criteria we have for, uh, you know, medical cannabis, you could argue that, that, you know, that bottle of wine at the end of the night is a, is a treatment, right? Because... Mm -hmm. You know, people are doing it and there isn't a line but you know kind of this is i think this is you know you say like you know or dennis said we're moving towards this kind of soma lifestyle yeah maybe in a way but like i think kind of the reason psychiatrists got really popular again is because we you know for kind of people in the 30s and 40s now who have basically you know we're the children of the prozac generation right you know the prozac was around in the mm. in the night isn't it, it was prescribed to anyone and it's still is for everyone you know ssris literally you can walk into a doctor and go i'm not feeling yeah i have some ssri i'm busy <laughs> right yeah. and then people are like you know they're, they're, they're turning to that and they're spending years numbed you know like, i can't remember which what is it, 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 it yeah, i don't really get into kind of uh, antidepressants but i still can't remember it is a part of them. Yeah. that one right uh, so scintilla, like, scintilla scintilla about the, the side effect being like just not just being not feeling depression or not feeling anxiety, but just not feeling. And it's that same with that weight loss jab that people are taking at the minute. It just or yeah. your desire for anything. And people are then, you know, the people literally getting to 18, 19, having anxiety, stress, depression, whatever. And they're having like, you know, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years on these drugs. And then, like, the reason I think you know, people, we, we, as you say, we are humans and we need feelings. Feelings are what define us, they're what teach us lessons. And people turn to psychedelics because they're like, well, fuck being them. Like, and then they do, you know, a mushroom trip or an IS ceremony or whatever. And they feel everything and they feel it so intensely it comes out and they cry. And, and then the next day, like, literally, those pathways are like blank slate. So you spend 10 years just flattening everything. And all of a sudden, you just open this book and your heart and your body just goes, actually, yeah, that's fucking way better. And this is why I think we're seeing not, you know, all right, the commercial side of it is driving it. But this just, I think there's a, a societal, you know, especially in the West, there's a societal and human desire to having for so many people having been numb for so long, mm. because that is the medical solution. Like not feeling happy, yeah. swallows, you know. And if they don't work, we'll take two of them and add this one on and add this one on. And then people just go and have this feeling, and it, you know, it's you let everything out, and all of a sudden they're like, yeah, actually this is way better. You know, I, I instead of just like pushing it to one side and like burying it and never ever addressing it, I addressed it in beautiful snot tiered filled glory and i poured my heart out to the universe and the universe smiled back and actually fuck yeah that's way better than just taking a pill every day that you know, thought, you know, thought it's on the inside yeah external factors can't influence internal factors um mm. people spend a long time learning that lesson myself included i think uh, i think they can it's just they shouldn't <laughs> um they can't fix them mm. Well, yeah, exactly. You are only responsible for your own little corner of the world. I think uh, you were talking about Huxley before. I think there's an Aldous Huxley quote, which is, uh, I am ashamed after all of my years of work to discover that the only thing that I am capable of changing in this small, changing in the small corner of the universe is my own self. It's literally, I mean, the, all the Stoics, all your great philosophers, all your great teachers of any of your great uh, traditions around the world come to the same sort of thing. 
there is only really the self. And that means that there is, I mean, when you take enough of these things, as I've kind of found, there is no other. So that means I am you and you are me. If I was born you, raised as you and lived as you, I would be you. I would make every decision as you. I would speak as you. I would think as you. So therefore, there is only one. And therefore, I don't want to harm me. So why would I harm you? Because you are me. Do you know what I mean? I think that's that's where the great the passive tradition comes from for most of the spiritual religions. Granted, there's a lot of fucked up shit like Buddhists in Myanmar and fucking Hindus in India at the minute and Christians and that conflict and every fucking there's there's a lot of religious drama right now. That's all I'm gonna fucking say. But these the teachings at the core of these things. I believe came from spiritual experiences related to psychedelics. I mean, there's num numerous trials now that are showing DMT is released in dodges and in the body through yoga, through uh, breath work, through uh, cold deprivation, as you say, that we're starting to biohack ourselves. And I think this is why um, I speak so passionately. And when I spoke with Dennis McKenna, he agreed with me as well of the trip with the trip is the solution. Because it's not just, yeah, the feelings, you feel a bit better. Your brain needs to go through it. I've had, as I've, I've spoken with in the podcast before, I had a, an acid experience, I don't know many of them, one night where I was stuck in the bathroom and the sound of Austin Powers on the DVD player was so bright that I couldn't enter the room, the light of it, because it was mm -hmm. that noise. I had such synesthesia and I went through this experience of living and dying of all of these creatures and it completely fucked me up for weeks afterwards in a positive way, I would say. It like really shook me up to my core and made me challenge and I had to rebuild every sort of decision consciously after that. But during uh, well, during the, the manifestations of the things, what I was doing was, was fighting my trauma. What I was doing, do you know what I mean? It's whether it forms as a dragon and you become a knight and you take this thing on. I'm obviously speaking in an embellished sense here, but you go through these these manifestations within your mind. You have these these car crash of thoughts and synergies, and it's it's your brain seeking to heal and give you alternative narratives. It's allowing you to revisit. This is why I think MDMA is so unbelievably powerful of a drug. It allows you to sit and cry with joy, regaling your worst trauma. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 healing imbued into a fucking tiny pill, really. And I think each of these things have their own uses, you know? Well, Sorry, Juan? Sorry to interrupt. So especially when you're dancing for 12 hours, it really heals you. 100 percent it brings together that sound, vibration, collectiveness, the the loss of self and the moving into that uh what do we call it? The it's just like a hyper focus, but not what I can't remember what it's called, flow state. Dancing is flow state. You flow with everybody else. You move, you undulate. Words lose meaning. Language loses meaning. It's it's one of those things. Again, the, the answer is in ourselves firstly, but the solution, I guess, uh, to, to how we implement this is together. And I think that's one thing these drugs do more than, especially alcohol, tobacco, sugar, you know, the things that are promoted in our fucking culture that separate us from each other because they, they weaken our bodies, they weaken our mind and our spirit. And not to, again this anybody everyone free choice of everything but in terms of what you look at in terms of neurological studies reduction of empathy uh hypothalamic dysregulation all sorts of things th there is disconnective elements to these and they are quite as all drugs can be like selfish you know about then you can become of an addictive quality so i think it's it's finding that right space for yourself that then we can't really dictate to others. And I think the only way to do that is a free society and an understanding society in the same way you do with when you're out with your mates and you're like several in your way and Gary's too fucked. You want to be angry at him because he's just pissed in the corner of a pub and he's going to get bat battered. But you know that could be you next week or it was you a year ago. So, so there's, there's an empathy and understanding. And that's all I want is that it may look bad and you may not like that, but that's their choice and right. And what we should do is be better to each other, provide that harm reduction, that education and that, that, you know, be that better environment for each other.